<laughs> so welcome everyone. This is a relationships and ROI where we help you and in, in each week we're here to help you strengthen and nurture and build your relationships with your ideal audience to have positive ROI in your business. I'm one of your hosts, Jessica Phillips with Relationship Marketing System and Now Marketing Group, where I always say relationships are more powerful than marketing. So my goal is to help you strengthen those with your ideal audience. Ravi Shulk is a social media and online customer service expert, where he loves to help businesses online effectively manage their customers using social media. He's also the founder of the Secrets of Five Star Service, an online membership site to help businesses and business owners boost their customer loyalty and sales. Mike Gingrich is president of web agency Digital Hill, and he's also co-founder of TabSite, founder of a nonprofit I Live give global where he lives by the philosophy of always being uncommon and always adding value but mike is adding more things to his belt and loftio he also has watched so we'll have to tell you a little bit more about that later but this week we're diving into creative ways to get noticed online and to show others how much you care so we are excited to dive into the subject there's many ways of getting noticed online like the one we're doing here but here are some creative ways that you may not always think about um, that can help you stand out from the herd because it's so noisy online as we all know so let's dive into a couple ways that people can get noticed um Robbie or Mike I'll let either one of you kick it off go for it Robbie uh sure I would say um the first one is a uh, collaboration so teaming up with people in your industry or your niche uh for me personally that's how I helped grow my community um my on everyone's social channels on a daily basis your fans are obviously used to hearing your tone of voice, the way you post, the way you share. So it can get to a point where you're getting quite stagnant with your engagement. So it, nothing's really flying off the handles unless you find a clever post or entertaining image or something. So um, guest posting or collaborating with people with content. So sharing your views on another site in your industry via blogs or even sharing uh, content on another fan page is a great way to bring that new <coughs> audience in. And what you'll find with that is not only will you get a new audience, you'll also get new questions, new conversations, and a chance to obviously get to know a new audience better. And in most cases, all without spending a single penny. So if you can team up with others in your niche, like today we're on this blab from, uh, you know, this is a great uh, avenue for then us to reach new audiences where normally we wouldn't get this kind of scope and uh, that kind of interactivity. So don't be afraid to team up with those in your niche. That's a good point, Ravi, because you just said it too. You're not only teaming up with other people to strengthen your brand, but you're also getting exposed to other audiences. And like if you're using example today, it's not costing us anything but our time. Yeah. So it's a free way um, to get noticed. So good points there. Thanks. Yeah, no, I think uh, Ravi's right on. And um, I think that, you know, you want to try to look for ways that you can gain exposure. Um, sometimes that can be you know, webinars, I think you can, you can have people sign up. It's a, it's a soft lead capture. Maybe it's going to be a free webinar and you're going to share some information for 60 minutes, that type of thing. So a webinar can be done solo. Again, you can do that with partnership as well and expand those audiences. But uh, that can get you uh, – there's something, you know, great about being able to present, you know, hear your voice, that type of thing. And so that's that's one I would mention. And, you know, another kind of related to that, and that's the uh, in-person event is just to do a, a workshop or a seminar type thing. And, uh, you know, just tell uh, you a little bit about that. I do kind of uh, regional ones here. And one of those that happened last fall, I think it was in November. So I was doing a workshop on social media. And, and again, so it's kind of one to many. If I can get 40, 50 people there, hey, that's great. That's a good audience. And uh, during, uh, it was actually a pretty long one. This was a three-hour event, so, and I had a, like an, at, at the halfway point, I had a break, and a guy came up to me and said, "Hey, this is awesome." He said, uh, "By the way, I'm um, a a guest on the technology channel for. I, it's not a guest; he's the host, I should say, uh, for the local uh, television station." And he said, "I'm doing a recording in two days." Uh, and I want to talk about emerging technology trends. This fits exactly. Can you join my panel? And so, mm -hmm. you know, so then I went from presenting a workshop to, you know, recording a 30 minute uh, television show where this guy's <laughs> interviewing uh, myself and three other panelists there along the way. And, uh, you know, then that went on TV. So it just kind of spiraled from there. But that was some great exposure from doing one event. 
And those are both free or paid, right? Like free, just your time. And I don't want to act like time is just, we have boats, uh, boatloads of it. But those are creative ways to get noticed and without a lot of cost or investment up front. Now, the webinars that you mentioned, sometimes you might have, you know, to pay for a software or whatever to do that. But if you're just getting started, and you have something to share or show of value, the biggest thing is just taking your knowledge and your value and giving it to others in a creative way. So, and getting it out there so people do notice you. So um, video is a really good way to do that. Um, you can use some of the tools that are built in right to your computer, like Mac has QuickTime Viewer, where you can do a screencast. So maybe you can show somebody just a quick tip a day. Maybe it's, um, if you're in our industry, let's say social media, or um, maybe you're doing something on WordPress and you know how to do something that is a common question, you can screen record your, your desktop and then upload it to YouTube and then share that on your social profiles. Or if it's something that you need to talk through, you can you know use the other version of QuickTime where it's you actually recording you talking to um, the camera. And then it gives you some time where you can um, you know, practice a little bit, maybe record it. You're not as happy with the first one round, so you can do it again. But that's a, a way to get that out there. Um, and it's share worthy because the, the, what your presentation that you just said, you were doing it for, for an audience. People found value in it, but making sure whatever you're putting out there is share worthy and of value because then others are going to want a piece of that and want to pass it on there you uh, go. to their audience. So that was a great way of getting connected in a, in a small group where other, another person said, Hey, that's a good value. I want to take you from that. And that's usually how a lot of speaking gigs get started. It's not you talking about how great you are and and hoping other everybody's going to believe what's on your website. It's you putting yourself out there, them seeing it and saying, I want some of that too, because I've, I've seen the proof, you know, that it's great. Excellent. So, um, welcome. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, I'll probably just also add, uh, when we talk about creative ways to get noticed, mm -hmm. it doesn't need to be something that always needs a strategy. That's probably <laughs> the opposite of what you're probably expecting yeah. to hear. But what I mean by that is, um, I might just have an opinion right now on uh, Instagram or something on my mind. If you're just thinking about it and you want to share that with the community, you could just shoot a quick video with what's on your mind. And you'll also find with things like that, you'll find other people might connect with it or there might be a hot topic or trending topic that you might want to you know, uh, share your views on. So don't feel that it always has to be something that's um, you know, pre-planned. It can be off the cuff as well. This is off the cuff. I'm live streaming on Facebook right now. Okay, so this is another way to, to get out there. So, yeah. is this a first live streaming yes. a blab on <laughs> Facebook? Live streaming blab. blab on there we Facebook. go. We're live on blab here, folks. Okay, this is what a blab is, and uh, we're live. Uh, so come on over and join us. There we go. So we'll keep no, going. No, come on we'll, over. We'll live stream that. <laughs> but All right, but, another but, way you know, with, live streaming with video live off the cuff. Facebook. You have to seize the moment. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah, and, and pulling in you know little things like this where you can live stream on Facebook. Obviously, as Periscope's already been mentioned, we can talk more about that. But uh, you know, these are are kind of creative tools that um, you can use to get in front of people, communicate. And as th th there's both and as as um, Jessica said, you having a strategy, and as Robbie said, sometimes it's impromptu and uh, in yeah. in the moment, and you can bring both of those elements in. All right. Yeah. You, the key is seizing the moment and taking it and, and doing something with it of value to share off and, and making sure you keep your just personality. You should make people feel like they're always with you or they get a good feeling of who you are from what you put out there. So if you're meeting them in person then at a conference or, you know, it just in person anywhere that they're going to already know who you are and what you're about because they've got to meet you digitally and, and they feel like they already know you. Um, Terrence yep. brought up a good point too with branding here. It says creative branding. How could that help you get noticed? Well, whatever you're putting out there, share worthy, maybe it's video or it is um, even images that you're putting up and putting out there. You can brand it to yourself. I've seen some people use this creatively with creative hashtags like be worth following. You know, Gary mm -hmm. V has his hash, you know, his hashtags with hustle in there and um, the same look and feel to what he's putting out there. He has his style and the share worthy content, maybe it's a quote or a tip, but it's all in within his style that then is put online as a, as a visual element and, um, and his tones voice voice. So when people are sharing it, you already know that that's where it's coming from. If you're in that loop. 
I know Canva is a great way. We talk about Canva all the time, but Canva is a great way to create some of those images um, yeah. that you can reuse again and again and um, make it really stand out and be your own brand and your own style. That you probably yep. don't and let's just break that down. I mean, that can be as simple as, you know, using Canva to add a little logo you know, into the, yep. the bottom right there of, of the, the images that you get out and, and sharing that on a regular basis. Um, it could be, you know, uh, adding the, the hashtag, if that was what it is, you know, something that is familiar and consistent is that creative branding that, that could flow across all your imagery, you know, uh, potentially with your, your videos that you produce as well. Yeah, and one thing with Canva, if you're going to use photos, stand out with it. Don't use, and I fell into this same trap where I found a LinkedIn picture and I branded this LinkedIn picture with our blog and with other things that we're putting out. And then I seen this LinkedIn picture. I was like, Ooh, somebody shared my article. Nope. It was the same deposit photo, <laughs> stock photo that everyone else has used. Right? So the best thing is use your own images or find uncommon images that really speak to who you are. The best thing is if you can take some pictures on your own with, you know, we're all photographers now with our, yeah. our cell phones, except to any photographers that I'd say that too they'd be like no you're not but you know take pictures when you're out and about and those creative things that are going to stand out and get noticed or use ones like unsplash.com where they're always uploading new cool um free stock photos that don't look so stock photo-esque but they're going to help you really stand out too and bring it home when you're putting that putting those images on there create hey, to stop and I take a look I got to add one comment too, and that is you, you got to be ready to engage. Like I had to turn off my live stream on Facebook because I was getting bombarded with people <laughs> commenting. So I got comments here. I'm trying to follow this train. I'm getting comments there. And so I'm like, whoa. You know, so I had to shut that one down. <laughs> I, I think Multitasking. Um, <laughs> I think another way to stand out with, um, like, for example, quotes, it's like such a common thing that we share. And they are going to be the same because the people who have, uh, come up with the messaging is obviously influential people right but one way you could stand out is when you create these quotes uh, create them in your own voice so uh, so like we're having a conversation today and let's just say you use the word awesome a lot as an example uh, put that into the quote if there's some kind of abbreviations you like to use or hashtags or the way you talk add that into the quote as well then that will make your quote stand out and also make it more conversational because obviously when you talk to people we talk like this we don't talk in quotes and we don't talk in uh you know yeah. old style english or whatever that whatever we see online we actually have a conversational tone so with your quotes i think have that type of conversational tone as well i think those are the motivational quotes that we relate to most the ones that have that relaxed approach and um something that you can relate to which is why we end up sharing it so i think use your personality in the quotes as well so rather than just uh, share a simple message uh, tweak it and adding your personality to it. So it may not just be the quote you're saying, maybe you add that personal story to it and you tag some others that could relate to you, but tagging other people, and that's with yours, Mike, being ready to engage, but putting that in there um, and, and telling that story, you're also going to not only reach your own audience that you're pulling in, but also their audience as well, going back to that. So if you're sharing a, a quote, motivational quote, you could say, hey, this made me think of you even, or um, I always you know, think of this quote, when in, I, whatever, and tag maybe a business or something in there. Facebook makes it easy too to add in the feelings or the emotions or the reactions um, into your posts, but use those. The more that you can add the mo most human tone of voice to what you're putting out there, the better. I know Twitter is kind of limited with the 120 characters. That's the, be the beauty and the curse of it, but um, they may be changing some of that. But one thing I did with Twitter today even is I just did a video introduction to the this blab. So I encouraged people to join on uh, the blab today. And I said, Hey, it's training Tuesday. Come join us today. I did it via video and then put that out there on Twitter versus just using the link. And then I did the same thing to Snapchat. And actually I was slowest to join into Snapchat um, for brands, but I actually had the most replies back on Snapchat um, for people asking mm. questions about the blab. Instantly I had four people come back. What's the link? Uh, because you, you know, you only have those 10 second videos that you can do on Snapchat, but I got people asking for the link directly in Snapchat, which then I was able to reply back. Very interesting. Very interesting. Really cool. Yeah. Okay. So I, I want to talk about uh, Twitter and little videos within Twitter and the mobile app as well. I think that because, uh, you know, our topic was creative ways to get noticed and show you care. So I'll, that's kind of an emphasis on the show you care part. I think that um, mm -hmm. Twitter in the mobile app um, makes it easy for you to record a quick video as a at reply. 
And I think that's a beautiful way to really personalize your message is to capture, you know, 15 second video or something like that, uh, that you can, you can take it just from a realm of, Hey, thanks for the retweet to, you know, Mike saying, Hey, I really appreciate that. Thank you. And you know, their name for the retweet. I appreciate that. And, and what you say about that, you know, you pass that on and, uh, I don't know, you know, a hundred fold difference that makes as compared to just a text reply. It definitely makes a big difference if you met him like at a conference or something too, or even like, thank you for our sales meeting, you know, like they're going to remember you doing that uh, versus just your, your name popping up that you're following them or add to them to a list. Those are all good ways, adding them to a list, staying engaged, but that video is going to be right there. Yep. Um, and, and you, yeah. Um, I have one more with video, um, just because this is my favorite topic apparently today. <laughs> but video, another creative way to use video and get noticed. Um, this can translate offline, but then also online is bomb bomb. It's a way of sending video emails that goes right within your email. It's all embedded. Um, but bomb bomb is a great way that I've been using too to follow up with with um, sales presentations or just emails back where it takes maybe a little bit more explaining, um, or even a drip campaign if you're sending somebody messages after you've met them online. And and they've subscribed to you, to you online. Um, but that's going to be another way of building that human connection, that relationships to show that you're, you care. You're not just sending this automatic, you know, message to them, but you've really put your full self literally um, in there into a video and send it back to them. Excellent. Yep. I think on the lastly, quickly with video, I'd probably say repurposing as well. Um, because Snapchat videos, for example, can be downloaded. So uh, download your Snapchat video, share it via your story so your followers see it, but then take that same downloaded video and then put it onto Instagram, put it onto your Facebook, put it onto YouTube, um, even <laughs> turn that short story into a couple of slides. It goes onto slide deck. So I think making one content work harder for you is another creative way to get noticed because your Snapchat followers might not even know you exist on Instagram or YouTube or even Facebook. Uh, so repurposing, I think, would be another way to Make your content work harder with less effort. Absolutely. Just like go. this, like taking this video, turning into YouTube, turning it into a blog, and then putting it all on social. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's smart. That's really smart. I like that. And I actually just noticed that, that you could do that on Snaps. I <laughs> I was trying to figure out, you know, I'm stumbling around as like an older person joining Snapchat. And uh, like clicking on it, I just noticed that you could download it. I'm like, yay, I thought that was just like there. I was always hesitant to do it on Snapchat first because I thought I wasn't going to be able to save it. So that's a, yep, that's you a can good download your You can download your story yeah. as a whole, all the individual Snaps. So you got both benefits. Yeah. You know, notice that some of the themes we're talking about, though, there's kind of a personalization <laughs> factor going on here. There's a more real time. I mean, it, it's no uh, mistake that Facebook is continuing to make uh, headway with video. I mean, you know, their mm -hmm. their rollout of um, autoplay videos, video and ads. Uh, so, so videos are working well on Facebook. And then you, you translate that across to what's happened this year, the trends, you know, the Periscope has, has come out, the live streaming on Facebook, uh, you know, some of these different pieces, the fact that we're doing a blab and we, it didn't even exist a year ago. You know, we have a show here on this tool. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so that's definitely one. I mean, the my video, even the webinars, you know, getting in front of people that way. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a, that's a creative way to show you care and, you know, I think that in another simple one, a follow-up way, and this can be kind of done digitally, but you can personalize it, and that is those kind of like personalized uh, greeting cards that you can, yeah. you can kind send of, uh, yeah, you can get it online and send that out. I mean, that that's a way to show that uh, you cared and kind of to right to the top. You send them a card yet. Yeah. Those are awesome. I was actually in somebody else's blab, and they sent me a card as a follow-up, and I was like – what? That means they had to go get my information, you know, because it was just my screen name on here. Look me up, find the address to the business and send me a card. And it was those extra steps that really showed that they did care. And that was, that's definitely, a, a, there's nothing that can beat those personal touches like that. Uh, right. Digital is one thing, but those personal touches are another. Hey, Ravi, you mentioned this about working with other people and collaborating with them and, and getting exposed to a whole other audience. 
And there's one way of doing this, like you said, webinars. Another way is like doing co-author blogs too on influential sites. So dropping your knowledge, you know, right into those sites that you know or forums that your audience is hanging out and adding your value right there because now you're getting exposed to other people's audiences um, right yeah. there. And it's just taking you putting your, your knowledge or your comments, even if you're just commenting on um, what someone else has put on there and adding your your digital wisdom. Um, don't spam. Don't say, well, yeah, check out my site here, but just add your your knowledge right there. And that's a great You're talking about comments, to, adding comments in a blog? Comments and yeah. co-author blogs. So, you know, some yeah. sites they have it restricted where you have to get approved, which go through that process. Mm -hmm. Definitely if you, if writing is for you and and you want to get noticed it's a great way of getting your name out there as a thought leader in whatever niche that you're in um, but if not if nothing else just comment back to others or you know like what they're putting on um, but you know follow up it's a great way of getting getting all of your audience in one space yeah I would, I would also say um, you don't need to be a so-called uh, expert in terms of you wouldn't you don't have to have written 50 different blogs before or 100 different blogs to be on on these big sites such as uh, entrepreneur inc uh, all these kind of sites the reason they accept bloggers in the first place is because they have ideas and they have something to share so even if you've written one or two blogs in your life and you email these big sites even reach out to influencers or even if you reached out to us as an example but you had a list of four or five ideas where you said, I think this could be valuable for your audience. And here's some bullet points. You'll find nine times out of 10, it's a great way to get into the bigger sites and get your opportunity and for you to get your opinion and thoughts shared out there. So come with ideas because then you're providing value to them. And in return, they're going to let you share your experiences with them as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a good point. Yeah. Yes, and it is, it is Ravi. It's, it's, uh, it's not Alex Pettit, but uh, he, I'm sure he, he'd appreciate that uh, compliment, right? <laughs> what do they say, yeah. that everyone has a twin? <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> that yeah, side note, you know, you ever notice that more when you travel? Like I travel internationally. You get to some other country and you're like, All my friends are here. What? Whoa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, excuse me, do you know this person? I know they live 6,000 miles away. I need to bring glasses next yeah. week, I think. <laughs> all right so kind of circling it into some of the things that we covered and then following up with other questions too and and any other ideas that we have but we talked about creative ways of getting noticed one you know working with others collaborating with other thought leaders and and, and sharing ideas working maybe on a session like blab for example or on a blog piece or even a download i know we've all worked on downloads together um and then we all put them, um, all of our names on them and all shared them across our networks, but it's exposing you to another audience. We talked about um, the power of getting in front of conference, you know, speaking engagements or a conference um, where you can share your knowledge there. Um, reaching out to others, you know, individually online via video or just tweeting or Facebook messaging them, but creative ways of doing video too, Snapchat, Instagram, Periscope, Facebook, YouTube streaming. It seems like video is like endless right now. Um, yeah. Lots you can do with uh, video and then branding your images, but using your tone of voice and always adding value and what you're putting in there. Yep. Now I know Amanda, Amanda, you uh, have something you want to add to this conversation. I, are you guys uh, ready to bring someone in? She's ready. Sure. I'm, yeah. I'm great having Amanda in here. My next point was being unpredictable. So this is good. <laughs> <laughs> Go, Amanda. All right. Hopefully she's coming. Like I, I, I went to Periscope now, so I'm live streaming this on Periscope here. Oh, oh, I figured it out. Yay. <laughs> How are you guys? You guys are awesome. Thanks for sharing all this great information. Oh, thank you. Great to have you here, Amanda. Good to see you again. Yes, yes. Yeah. I've been out of the loop for quite a while. I've had some health issues that have kind of uh, had me uh, um, away from the whole medium, but I'm glad to be back and feeling so much better. So, good, um, good, good. But one uh, of the things I, I really, I've been hearing everything that you've been saying, and one of the traps that I've been falling into is kind of regurgitating the same information and writing about the same information and everybody's kind of writing and talking about the same information. 
But what I think is so powerful is when we really share our personal stories and our struggles and, you know, our, 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 we really humanize ourselves in our content and in our business. And that's one of the things that I, I really think creates uh, a connection and a loyal community with, with yourself and your brand and your business. So that was what I wanted to share. That's a good point. I yeah. just was at a conference where Cabbage was speaking and they were talking about they were putting out all this awesome content, right? And they had all these writers come in and they couldn't figure out why they weren't getting the traffic that they had because they were writing on all these buzzing subjects. But they said that they went back and reviewed and they found out that what they were sharing was parsley. You know, it was like the sprinkling, like look good, kind of make it nice, dressed up kind of stuff. And what they wanted to be sharing was more of the the spices that stuck, you know. Mm. And so they went back and they looked into forums and seen what other people in their industry were really talking about, like the questions under the forums and answered like that really drilled down content, almost like if you thought about it, like long tail keywords, if you're thinking about like one keyword content, a long tail keyword, like how do I decide what kind of content to write for this industry? But they went and drilled down and they noticed that um, they were standing out a lot more and they were trying to like ride this fence of being like really happy and, you know, politically correct, which is always good, but they added their more of their tone of voice in there and really like made it their brand, um, added that little bit of edge. And like we're saying, being unpredictable and, and that human connection and their content went from like here to here. Wow. Um, mm. So you bring up some really good points on, you know, not regurgitating the same thing, but adding your own personal experiences, your own personal story and being transparent. But that's good. Yes, definitely. I just like even just recently with Periscope, I noticed, you know, just showing that, Hey, I don't know what I'm doing and asking really dumb questions and, then just sharing, you know, these very simple little things was helpful to people, you know, because they didn't, they don't know either. And they're kind of afraid or timid to ask. Yeah. But anyway, thank yep, you, absolutely. thanks for having me on. And it's awesome. To I'm see glad you're doing things. better. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I don't know you, Jessica, but I know Robbie and I know Mike well. And, um, you know, thank, you. thank you guys and, and, and see you soon. All right. Take care. Bye. Take care, Amanda. Oh, that's cool. Lynn Lease, um, you had a comment in here from zero to 20K followers. Would you mind, do you want to jump in and say something on that? Up to you. I don't want to put you on the spot. Sounds like but, quite a cool. story there. So yeah. somebody just took off from uh, that uh, one minute personal scoop. So she's ready to come. Oh, sweet. Come on in. Oops. Except. I don't know if it let her in. I yeah, she's coming the way button. it looks from my side. Hello. Oh. Hey. Yep. Hey. hey. Good. Man? Thanks for having me. Um, ah, I'm put on the spot here. Um, <laughs> sure. So, <laughs> so I follow uh, Shailene Johnson, uh, the Turbo yeah. Fire Lady, on Periscope, and she found Maya Barons one night. She was just um, sifting through the map on Periscope, and she found a woman who um, was broadcasting from California close to where Shalene lives and she just hopped on to this one minute scope and um, Maya is a personal coach a life coach mm -hmm. and she had zero followers and Shalene watched this one minute broadcast of her um, sharing she had lost her husband recently and she was talking through the grief process which is something she coaches people on and it was just really raw and personal and then Shailene scoped and showed Maya's scope just by holding up her phone. So all of Shailene's okay. followers were watching Maya Barron's. And um, okay. after that scope was over, I went over to Maya's profile and watched her followers just tick up and up and up. And um, she's at just over 20,000 followers now. And um, so just a good story. And all she did was shared what was raw on her heart and shared her emotion and who she was. It's amazing. That's great. Because when you focus on the adding value, or if she was focusing on just putting in herself versus her intent wasn't to go in. If I go in, I want to grow all these followers. Right. But her intent first was like, let me be transparent and raw and add value. Then you'll get the reward. So when you think of it and you lead with that heart to serve, then you, you can get it back. Right. And it was her first scope ever. That is oh, a wow. really crazy. That is <laughs> it's awesome. an amazing story. It's a good example, though. Thank yeah. you. All right. See you guys. Yep.
Daniel. All right, take care. Awesome. You know, I think I think even what we're talking about here is the the need to kind of step out of the box. I mean, um, this uh, the live streaming element has kind of done that for us, and um, it's forcing people to need to uh, be open, be there. I mean, this is what we're talking about. You know, the the ROI of of relationships and um, your relationships only start when you get out there and meet someone, right? And yeah. social media, online, the video, it's it's forcing us to to do some of these things and to you know, uh, get out of the office or, or bring people into the office, basically virtually kind of thing. And it's just a, it's a new dynamic there. Some businesses have trouble doing that. They say, you know, oh, we're not good on video. How are we going to do this? But, you know, but it's, it's something that it's, it's conversational. Yes, we have people out there watching us, but, uh, you know, largely I'm talking with two friends here and we're talking about a topic that, that we know about and care about. And that's, that's what we're doing. It is who we are. That's right. And yeah, and I'll, I say it, I say it all the time, but like you just said, relationships will always be more powerful than any kind of marketing campaign or anything that you can do. Um, so, and it comes before the ROI. So I think um, really good. also on that note, uh, especially with that story that you shared on Periscope is um, don't feel that all the videos have to be scripted because uh, even I fell into this trap when I first started. It was uh, my original videos were so monotone because I was trying to remember what to say and how to say it and the length of the video as soon as i kind of chucked that away and bullet pointed it i was able to freestyle and have a bit of more of a conversation in the video so it comes across a bit more natural but uh when you're starting out on video uh, don't feel you have to script everything it's, it's sometimes the best videos happen when they're off the cuff and you just hit and with live video you don't have the chance to script it so um get used to practicing off uh, off script and uh, kind of just let your thoughts run wild that's a good point on that. Chris Brogan, he has this owner's magazine and he had this content course that he was doing and I went and I signed up for it. And at first, like, I was like, okay, he is literally like reaching over, grabbing stuff in the side of the video. And this is like the course on his website, not like a Periscope or anything. And I was like, kind of like, hmm, what, you know, what is he going with this? You know, like it was not cut at all. Okay. But I grew to love it that much more because it was like, I was hanging out with him for a personal coaching each month versus just getting this highly polished video with, you know, the intro exit, which is still nice, but I, I learned to love it that much more after a while. Cause I felt like I got to know him and his quirks, you know, um, more than this highly polished product. There you go. Yep. Well, speaking of time flying, uh, <laughs> boom, boom, boom. there it is. Yeah. <laughs> so as we wrap up, we'll, you know, if you do have a question, please shoot it our way, but, um, I'll we'll let everyone put their, uh, how to get in touch with them in the comment box. I'm going to also drop a link to our next relationships and ROI session here there it is. next Tuesday, same time, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where we're talking about the foundations of starting right with any client relationship. So what things must you have in place first and get that started right on the right foot so you make sure that you're you know, going to have that successful relationship that's a long and uh, rewarding one. Um, so that link is right here. We hope you guys will all subscribe to that. But Ravi, how can people get in touch with you? Uh, to reach me, you can just reach out my website. It's just ravishukal.com. I'll put it in the comments. Uh, just search for my name on Facebook, uh, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, everywhere, and I'll be sure to connect and uh, say hi back. Yes. Same for me. You can find me online, uh, mikeingrich.com. And uh, on Facebook, it's uh, facebook.com slash Mike G Digital. Um, basically, if you can Google that and spell the last name correctly, which I'll put in the notes, you'll find me then. Ditto everything. What you guys just said, jessicaphillips.com, facebook.com forward slash Jessica Phillips, Twitter, same handle, Instagram, all of it. And um, be sure to connect as well. It was awesome having some time out with you guys as usual uh, here and, and talking about this, but also seeing some new faces and some familiar faces here in the lab. We thank all of you guys for your time and hope to see you back here next Tuesday, 2 p.m. Eastern time, uh, talking about getting started on the right foot with your client relationships. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Have guys. a good rest see of your week. week. Take care.